Welcome back to Restaurantopia. Dave Ross, I got you with me here, and you're going to talk to us about how to up your Valentine's Day game as a restaurant. Imagine a perfect world where you can build a restaurant, open the doors, and make loads of money. Unfortunately, those days are over. It takes great leadership, hard work, and long hours to operate a successful restaurant. Together, we can make it happen. This is Restaurantopia. I am. I'm very excited about this, and uh, I would appreciate your support because I know in your past uh, career, you have probably uh, held Valentine's Day close to your heart. Um, yeah, it was my favorite day, right up there with Mother's Day and New Year's Eve, I promise yeah, you. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. So actually, I, 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 my thought was that Valentine's Day could potentially be a restaurant's second biggest day of the year behind Mother's Day. Is that accurate? Or... Yeah, it's definitely one of the big ones. There's no question about it. Yeah, I would say top two or three. Um, New Year's Eve, you can't ignore for, for mm-hmm. so many restaurants. That's such a big one. Mother's Day is huge too, depending on what kind of operation you are. Um, and, and just if you don't have a big Mother's Day, uh, please please throw a brunch on Mother's Day and you yeah. will book up. I almost guarantee it. Yeah. No, it's it's it, it's without a doubt the biggest restaurant holiday. Um, mm-hmm. But Valentine's Day can be, can be up there if you do it the right way. So I want to talk about, you know, a little bit about you know, some of the things that are kind of typical that, you know, that people are always going to do, but I don't want to concentrate on that. I want to go into, I've got three bullet points of things that you can do that maybe are not top of mind for the holiday um, and, and kind of drive some more revenue and, and figure it out. So um, yeah, all that sounds very good. Yeah. So making, thing, uh, making things easier to make more money. Let's do it. Exactly. Yeah. Let's make some money. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to start with, you know, obviously Valentine's day, it's known for, you know, the prefix menus, the uh, free appetizers or free dessert or the, the combo meals for couples, um, mm-hmm. wine tastings, like all those different things. Like, you know, and I'm sure you, you probably have a, a laundry list of other things you've done. Like what, what are some, I've, I've done are, all those. Yeah. What are, what are some other things you've, you've, you've done for Valentine's day specifically at restaurants you've been in? Cause you've been in some high end places that probably got a lot yeah. of Valentine's day business. Well, no, that's it. Uh, we did uh, mostly prefix, just like you talked about, where you would do multiple courses, um, large for two people. It just makes sense because everybody in Valentine's Day is coming out in a two top. It's very, very rare that you would have a four or a six top. Right. So everything was geared for couples and everything was, was around shareables, right? Like you always did like a prefix menu and then you would do like maybe two petite fillets with some lobster tails and then a, sh- a big shareable dessert with some chocolate and strawberries, whatever the case may be. Pretty typical stuff. I mean, I... I I don't know that that I've seen anything too crazy. I mean, what you what you talked about is is really comprehensive. You you close the circle on that one. What I want to focus in on because you know, first of all, if you're not doing anything, you should do something, okay? Because people are people are going to go out, they're going to spend money. Now, I'm speaking to concepts probably that are your mid to upper scale. You know, if you own a pizza shop, you're going to have a whole other solution. If you have a quick service restaurant, whole other, you know, you you, you might not. Uh, get the same traffic that a sit down mid scale to upscale restaurant is going to get. So I'm really focusing in on probably that customer or I'm sorry, that concept, because those, are the, those are, those are the people that are going to have the most customers, you know, for this type of holiday. But one thing that's a little bit missed sometimes is, is how do we market to single people on this holiday? Okay. <laughs> Wait, you're supposed to market to single, single people? Well, uh, I don't so- know. I think it's an idea. I think it's, I think it's interesting. No, no, no. I, I, you just hit me. I, I've never even thought about it. So I, I unfold this, please. Yeah. So, so here, so think about this. What if you were able to arrange with maybe a local matchmaker or dating service or something like that and do a speed dating in okay? your party room? Yeah. Where you do, I and, love and, it. And you do or in the party room, maybe not, maybe, maybe, maybe you take part of the restaurant and then you have a little speed dating thing where you do small courses for each round and you do little cocktail tasters and you do stuff where, you know, where you can get people to come in, meet new people. Um, and, 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 and kind of cater to that person that doesn't have the the date on Valentine's Day. Dude, I really like this. <laughs> I do. Um, no, I think it's cool, man. And also too, it's like, you know, the small courses and small drinks is, it's brilliant because you take it, you, you give them a little bit of a distraction, right? So I, I've never done speed dating, but I have some friends that, that, that were divorced and they went through some speed dating. So I hear about the rigors and trials and tribulations of it. And it's awkward as hell, right? So what you're talking about with the small courses and stuff, it, it gives us a kind of like a, a communal talking point, something that we can share and experience. And, and honestly, as a chef, maybe if I were dating someone, which I haven't dated in 20 some years, but if I were like, I'd be very interested to see what they think about food and drink. Cause that's kind of the center of my universe. But that being said, everybody appreciates that. And, and you can often gauge the, the quality of a date off their food preferences. I, at least I know a lot of my friends do like, oh, there's no way I could date this girl because, you know, like she only would eat this and, and I want to go out here and do this. You know, there's there's a lot of brilliance in that, Dave, simply put, man. And, yeah, and I no, just I mean, like the whole thing. 
Yeah. And it's a great, great conversation piece and, and, and everything on, on again, what, what do you like, what you don't like preferences, yeah. things like that, you know? So, cause a lot of, you gotta remember a lot of our lives revolves around food. You know what I mean? A lot, you yeah. know, when's the last time you've been to an event that didn't have food of some sort, you know what I mean? Right. You know, so everything we do has food involved in it. So just thought that was, that was an interesting take and something, something you could do. No, obviously certainly. That, takes, that, 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 that takes some, you know, work ahead of time that takes setting it up, that takes, you know, creating those menus, you know, but, but so does, so does doing a prefix menu, you know what I mean? So yeah. it might be worth a shot. Well, maybe you could, maybe you could partner with someone who does this for a living, right? Because there are organizers and event planners who do this very thing. Maybe there's sure. an opportunity to cut them in or whatever the case may be. I'm not sure what that looks like, but it's a novel idea anyway. And uh, I think it's a largely underserved community. Yeah. So the, the next thing under the, you know, focusing in on the single peeps, um, you know, make takeout a thing, you know, can, you know, you've got the prefix menu, but what can you offer with that? delivery, takeout, pickup situation that you, that's good for not, not only single, but just maybe families that don't have the resources or maybe don't want to be out on the, on the typical, you know, Valentine's day weekend, you know, but they want to still, you know, they, they don't want to worry about getting a reservation that, that they can't get, you know, they just want to have that meal at home with the family or, or whatever it is, you know? So, you know, making that something that is easily accessible, frictionless that we like to talk about. You know, yeah. I think yeah. Well, this is that that word lur, that word or phrase we just learned is, is the counterpoint trend. When everybody else is over here doing this, you're over here doing this. There's some advantage in that. Yeah, no, for sure. And then there's yeah, something like I that too. Ever, I've never, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but it's it's called Galentine's Day. Uh, I've heard of it. Is that where you do it with like friends or something, or yeah, with so your girlfriends? According to Urban Dictionary, this is Galentine's Day is celebrated on February 13th. So this is the yeah, day I think before. that stems from Parks and Recreation, if I'm not mistaken. I think it Leslie Nope invented that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parks and Recreation in the office yep. were like they 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 mm-hmm. used it uh, to kind of honor those who are single during that couple's heavy holiday. You know what I mean? So uh, I love that. Now all of a sudden you got you got something that stands out. You got something that draws attention. You got something kind of counterculture, and and yeah. it's a little bit disruptive. I love that. Yeah, and I think if you did it right, you know, so so Valentine's Day this year falls on a Tuesday, I believe, okay, in yeah. 2023. So you think about it, like obviously the weekend, that weekend prior is going to be heavy, you know, that's when people are going to do most of their stuff. But then you got this Valentine's Day potentially that you could capture some stuff on a Monday that might not be, mm-hmm. you know, as busy. And then you've got the actual holiday on Tuesday that you're going to probably have, you know what I mean? So you can yeah. almost extend that that situation, you know, just because of the day, just because of the way it falls in the week, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so those are a couple of things, you know, marketing to the singles, marketing to families. I think there's, there's a, there's an underserved population of people in this couple's holiday that you could, you could go after. And, and I'm not saying you don't do the couple's thing, but you allow the, the, make it easy for, for people to, uh, to partake that maybe aren't in a relationship. Yeah, absolutely. Why not double down? You got this grandiose event and you got a largely underserved community. You can serve both. You know, you can, you can do both. Absolutely. And then mm-hmm. uh, hopefully you double down on your revenue for the week. You know, that's amazing. Yeah. No, for sure. So my second point is um, doing collaborations with vendors and local businesses. Okay. Yeah. So are you using your food and beverage vendors to help market for you? You know what I mean? Are you, mm-hmm. are you doing, you know, the, the wine and liquor companies or the food company, you know, or, you know, give the ability to do the tastings and samplings of their stuff? Um, you know, are they marketing their brand alongside of yours? You know, do you have special food items that maybe you're not normally seeing? You know, can you get with your you know, food service distributor and talk about, Hey, you know, uh, can we fly some exotic fish in from Hawaii or Alaska or some, something that's not normally in the market that we can do that day? Um, I just spent some time down in Florida and, uh, you know, there, there's a seafood company down there that they're doing this week in and week out, you know, they get bycatch and they get different things that, that, that happens, you know, and they're able to, you know, in a seafood heavy market, provide these interesting things to these chefs that they don't normally see. You know, so how, how can we do that in, in, in Ohio? You know, I mean, maybe you got to plan it out, but can you fly in that, you know, whatever exotic fish it is, or is there some wild game maybe that's not normally on a menu that you can do um, where there's not as much preconceived notion of like people know what a, a filet mignon goes for, you know, or surf mm-hmm. and turf meal, which is the, the typical go to prefix entree. You know, what I mean, yeah. so can you do something a little bit different where you can make a little bit more revenue on it because it's not as top of mind and people don't understand the price point maybe as well. Um, sure. It's, 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 it's deviating away from steak and lobster is, is listen, there's a reason why you get the filet with asparagus and hollandaise and you get the lobster tail with that is because it is so damn popular. If you were to bring on like a blue nose bass or a trigger fish or something like that, that has, in my opinion, 
like a ton of gastronomic value. Like these fish are unbelievable. And I'm a firm believer we're fixated on too many or too little species of fish. Anyway, Mm -hmm. there's so many more out there that are absolutely delicious. They don't have a name like salmon or tuna, um, but they eat amazingly, amazingly well. Why they're not more mainstream is beyond me. But to your point, if you started kicking the tires now, most distributors and and purchasers um, have some relationships that they can leverage for you to get these in. And there's some doctor door programs out there that are pretty stout. Yeah. I I know with our guy here at, I know our guy here at Hillcrest, like he's, he's pretty flexible. Like if you want something, you give him time, he's going to get it for you. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So there's a little planning ahead and what's availability, but I, I had something, uh, this last weekend, um, uh, or the, I'm sorry, I, I had something this week, um, down in, down in, uh, Stewart, Florida, it was pumpkin swordfish. Nice. And nice. how was uh, it? Man, it was so awesome. good. It was yeah, awesome. So good. Right. Awesome. So oh, there's. There's an amazing amount of good fish, golden tile fish, you know, triple mm-hmm. tail, like all of it's so good. Red, red fish. I mean, no, no, they eat a lot of that in Tampa. Obviously everybody's fishing for that. But if you come up here, like barely anybody knows it right. and, um, the, you know, do the lack of popularity, the price points usually typically pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple of things you can collab. So how, how do you, uh, how do you tie into maybe a local charity, you know, and do a per, you know, percentage of your proceeds to benefit that local charity, you know, um, yeah. and that's something you can do any time of year, but you know, you're going to have a lot of people, you know, coming in and, 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 and again, how the holiday lands, I think is important. So that weekend, remember the weekend closest to the holiday is going to be your probably time you're going to drive the most sales, but how do you get people in and get those reservations on the Monday, Tuesday? Um, maybe it is, you know, on the weekend, you've got your certain thing going on, but then you, you provide some sort of feel good that, you know, percentage of proceeds on Monday, Tuesday reservations go towards this local charity. And, and you kind of market that heavy and get people, you know, pulling on the heartstrings to come in and, and, and do that. Um, yeah. I'm also a big fan of the experience too. When you talk about bringing other, other entities to the program, you know, maybe you have, or, or you could do, so it's like a Monday, you said it falls on a Tuesday, right? So correct. maybe you could leverage that Sunday, Monday, and you could do interactive cooking classes in your event space. Mm-hmm or in the back of your dining room where you're teaching people how to temper chocolate and dip strawberries. Right. And then you incorporate that as part of the dinner, because in my experience anyway, especially in the last year or so, I've done a number of, of private cooking lessons and they go off incredibly well. Like I can't believe people want to listen to me talk that much. And, and, but they do, it's crazy. And you throw an apron on them, all of a sudden they're having fun. They're creating memories. It's more than just going out to dinner. We do that all the time. And just because the food's different, yeah, of course it's elevated. But when you get the people with the aprons, they get their hands dirty and then they sit down and eat what they made and they got some instruction. There's a lot of positive juju coming from that situation. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Um, the last point I had on, on collaborations was, you know, can you do a drawing or some sort of raffle? Can you give away gift baskets? And again, this seems like maybe it's an old school, like, you know, putting your business card in the fishbowl idea, but you know, I don't see this a lot, you know? So when you, when you, when you, uh, you know, when you set your reservation, can you go into a drawing, you know, put together with local vendors, maybe, maybe there's a, a local massage place, a uh, flower vendor, wine, chocolate, you know, all those different things that, that, that scream Valentine's day. Can you make up, a, you know, some gift baskets and then, you know, raffle those off that night, um, for people that, you know, and maybe, and maybe you get more, maybe you get more chances the earlier you made your reservation, or maybe you get, you know, whatever yeah. it is like, you know, um, but be able to do that. And, and a lot of the stuff, like, I know you're probably listening to us thinking like, okay, well, this is, seems like a lot of work and is it really worth it? But any anytime you're going to try to like, you, you, I don't think you're going to wake up one morning and do something easy that takes five seconds and your revenue is going to go up 10, 15%. Yeah, yeah, you're for sure. You have to work. Okay. Right. So some of the stuff it's going to take planning, it's going to take some conviction. Um, but I think if you do that, um, you're going to see, you're going to see the results because, because, because the traffic's there. You know? Yeah. Well, and, and going back to partners, is there, is there a hotel down the road that, that maybe doesn't book up this time mm-hmm. of year that you could get the honeymoon suite at a discounted rate, yeah. you know, or something like that to where you could start doing, you know, maybe these auction items are, are a gift basket that not only has champagne in it, but also a free stay at the local hotel in a penthouse or honeymoon suite. Right. And if you really want to blow it up and maybe you're a multi-unit, you get a ton of engagement in this and it's worth it. Maybe you get two plane tickets somewhere, right? Yeah. Maybe you do something grandiose like that to just listen, not only can you drive revenue, you know, through the, through the doors, but also your, your social media juice would, would go crazy just based yeah. on the fact that you're giving away something so crazy, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I, lo- I love that because you're, cause you're thinking outside the box in the sense of, I think most restaurant operators, like, again, they're going to do the petite filet with the lobster tail and, mm-hmm. and do that menu and, and make a little bit more money. And they're just going to kind of ride it out. Like they've always done where if you actually put some, you know, put some thought and effort into like ideas, like you're talking about, you, you could, you could boost this up very easily because the dollars are going to be spent, 
You know what I mean? That's it. Um, and as we learned, it doesn't take much to go viral these days. So if you do something kind of crazy like this, especially with a charity component and a feel good component, and then a ridiculous giveaway, if you can somehow kind of encapsulate that you'll be on, you'll be on the local news. I guarantee it. You'll go yeah. wild. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. And then the last thing I think, and, and this is something that I, I'm a proponent of any time of the year, but I think, you know, for this, because we're talking about Valentine's day, you know, use your sales force. Okay. What do I mean by that? Your sales force. This is your servers. This is your people that are out there in front of the customer menu. Your menu, okay? You know, so you want reservations for a Valentine's Day, right? Okay. So think about this. What if you did a promotion with your service staff to book reservations, maybe the six weeks coming up to Valentine's Day? So instead of waiting for the phone to ring or people to come through on 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 uh, you know open table or res resi or whatever your your reservation applications are, you know, why not? Why the people are sitting in your restaurant, get them to book while they're there. They just had a great experience, hopefully. Can the server at the end of the meal have some sort of spiel to get them to, hey, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up. Do you guys have plans yet? You know, I can book your reservation now and give get you X, Y, Z. You know, maybe it's a discount or maybe it's a free whatever. And you have some sort of promotion to, to that, that there's an advantage of booking right then and there. Because what happens? Like somebody has a great meal in your restaurant. They leave. Valentine's Day is four weeks away, three weeks away, two weeks away, whatever it is. Um, and, and in that person, you could have had that commitment there at that time. Or you can let them leave and then just hope that maybe the conversations that they have about the, the holiday leading up to, you know, to the date that they pick your place. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Well, listen, as a dude, you'd be doing me such a solid because I'm going to forget to book it. So if you give me four weeks out, I can book it at my time. And yeah. then also, if you're partnering with local businesses, I can go ahead and buy some flowers through you. And you can mm. surprise my wife at the table with the flowers that you partner with the local, you know, uh, greenhouse down the road with. There's a lot you can do with that. Um, and let's talk about what you just said with, with marketing while the people are there. I worked for an operator who was masterclass at this, any wine dinner we did, anything we did, we always, always, always tripled down in our efforts on Friday and Saturday night. Cause that's when we had the most fans in there. Mm -hmm. Like the people were already fans. They already want to do your stuff. So it's one thing to blast it out on social media, but it's another thing to talk to every table. Hey, we got this really kick-ass wine dinner coming up or, Hey, we got Valentine's day mm -hmm. coming up. This is what we're doing. Market, market, market there in person. Now, word of mouth is much powerful than any form of advertising we got. Yeah, no. And, and, and again, the customers there, they just probably had a great experience. Yeah. You, know, that you can get them to commit there. And, and again, it's, you know, I, I know people are listening going, Dave, it's so easy. You just say, well, I'll just give away gifts and, and, and discounts yeah, yeah, yeah. and do all this stuff. But let's say you gave away a 10% discount to book three weeks out and they were in the restaurant and say, hey, if you book it with me now, we can do, we can set you up with a 10% discount for, oh, well, you're just giving away my money, Dave. Here you go again. Just giving away my money. Come on, well, Dave. How many opportunities do you have to price a menu? Because you're probably going to do some sort of prefix or some sort of menu. How many opportunities do you have to, to price something accordingly to, to, to capture that? You know what I mean? So yeah. we'll price the menu in, in congruent with the discount. So, you know, if you went to up 10% higher than you were going to, to give a 10% discount. And I know that sounds like, okay, it might sound like uh, pulling the, the, the rug over somebody, but I'm saying you're like, trying, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to sell me some snake oil right now, aren't you? But, but, but at the end of the day, my snake oil is better than anybody else's. Okay. You're going to love oh, it. That's you're what I'm saying. Listen, time. The experience yeah, yeah. is there. Uh, you know, so all jokes aside, you're dealing with supply and demand here. The fact is that Valentine's day seats at, at your awesome restaurants out there are in short supply. It is hard. Every restaurant is booked up for a reason. So demand is higher than supply and guess what happens to price. So you have an opportunity to charge premium pricing. So to your point, you don't have to get greedy with it, but you can give yourself a little buffer to make the offer more intriguing to those people. I, I don't disagree with that. I mean, that's, that's, we've been doing that for years in business. And then how do you incentivize the staff? You know, don't just assume that because they get paid an hourly wage and make some tips that they're just going to book up your reservations. Like how do you, how do you get them to effectively ask and receive those reservations? Yeah. So do some sort of contest with them, do some sort of, uh, you know, you'll drive a, a staff down by just ringing them out like a towel. Like, Hey, look, you're here. This is what you have to do. When you gamify things and you say, Hey, look, you're going to, you're going to go above and beyond the normal scope of your job. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go above and beyond in my normal scope of compensation. It yeah. could be something as simple as a gift card. It could be a $50 bill. It could be any of those things, yeah. right? It could be a free day off. It could be a flex, flex day yeah. schedule wise. It could be all kinds of things that we've uh, talked anything, about that, right. that are driving, you know, uh, staffing. Yeah, no question, man. No question. But yeah, you got to get creative and, and you have to be generous. There's no, there's no question about it. So you got to pay to play, right? 
Yeah. So, so, you know, start thinking about this now. I know it's coming up on the holiday. You know, when we release this, we're probably two weeks out, but you know, even if, even if it doesn't work, like some of this stuff can be plug and play for other holidays and other things. Like you got mothers yeah, no up. And, you, and you got places where money is going to be spent. So are you doing a good job of capturing as much as possible because the people are going to be there and doing it? Um, or you just kind of, kind of just do what everybody does and, and make the money and, and move on. And in either way, either answer is fine. You know what I mean? But, but I would start trying to be a little creative and get ahead of this and, and, and do the best you can to drive as much revenue as possible through some of these ideas. So you're right. It, it is fine to do it the old school way and just, just make it and they will come, but it's, it's really the excellent choice to start promoting now, start gamifying it, start doing all these little bonus and value add things to get booked up ahead of time. Cause what's yeah. wrong with that? Not, not, you know? at all. not at all. Not at all. Yeah, get it get it secured now. For sure, for sure. So I that's what I got, Anthony. Yeah, that, no, that, listen, man, this is this is all good stuff now. The box because you're right. We do see the same like mundane kind of things. Not that they're bad. That's what most restaurants do. They're effective. But you can definitely gild the lily here by using some of your ideas. I appreciate you bringing these to the forefront and table. Stuff I never thought about before. No, thanks for the thanks for the banter, man, and thanks everybody for listening. Hopefully, everybody has a successful Valentine's Day, and we will see you next time. It's on. It's a high quality pod. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Take care. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to Restaurantopia. The gratitude that we have for each and every one of you spending your precious time to listen to this podcast is immeasurable. Please make sure to tell a friend about this podcast. And also, if you have any feedback for us, visit us on restaurantopia.com and drop us a line. You can also subscribe on your favorite place to listen to podcasts. Thank you and have a great day.